I want to ask you a question today. Where do you think the promised land is? You see, most people do not realize that the promised land is not um, a physical place where you can see, a physical place where you can touch or you can, you know, do one thing or another. But the promised land is a spiritual land. Let me give you an example. Think about it when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt to the promised land. The land full of milk and honey. Let me ask you a simple question. Did they find the milk and the honey when they got to where they were going? When they got to Canaan? No. The milk and the honey, actually they are the ones who reared the cows and the goats to produce the milk. And the honey, they are the ones who set up everything for the honeybees to come. You see, when God talked about the promised land, the promised land has always been in our mind. Remember what God told Abraham concerning the promised land. He told him, as far as your eyes can see, that land I'm going to give it to you. So what did God really mean? He meant, as far as you can think, as big as you can think, I'm going to give you that land. And I'm going to explain to you using a couple of verses so that you can be able to understand that for sure the promised land is not a physical place. Remember, the Bible talked about the kingdom of God being within you. In the book of uh, Luke chapter 17 verse 21, the Bible says, Neither shall they say, Lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. And understand, my friends, that this verse suggests that the kingdom of God, which includes the fulfillment of his promises, is not an external location, but it is something within us. And if the kingdom is within us, then the promised land, the promised land can also be viewed as a state of spiritual consciousness. You understand? So, because that promised land is where we are supposed to dwell. That is the land that God promised us. And he has said that that place is spiritual. And again, the Bible talks about the renewing of the mind. The Bible says in Romans 12 verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove uh, what is that good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So, my friends, when you look at this, this kind of transformation and renewal of the mind are essential to understanding and experiencing God's promises. And in this case, the promised land can represent the spiritual awakening, all right, or realization that comes from a renewed mind. When you renew your mind, which means salvation, when you renew your mind, then my friend, you've come to this spiritual awakening or basically you've gotten into the promised land. Again, the Bible talks about entering God's rest. I want to show you all these verses so that you can understand for sure the promised land is in the mind. The promised man land is not somewhere where you can see physical with your physical eyes. Remember the Bible says <clears throat> in the book of Hebrews 4 verse 11, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall under this after the same example of unbelief did you hear that you enter into rest so that you don't uh, fall into the same problem of unbelief you see rest is belief and the promised land was often referred as to a place of rest for the israelites do you remember that however the hebrews uh, uh, Hebrews explains that this rest was symbolic of entering into a state of faith and trust in God. And this rest then is not a physical location but a state of spiritual peace and fulfillment that one enters through belief and a shift of in, in consciousness. Do you understand that? Again, I can also talk about spiritual understanding of God's promises. In relation to what I'm talking about, listen to Galatians chapter 4, verse 28. The Bible says, Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, it's talking about the believers, as Isaac was, are we the children of promise? Mm -hmm. Are you a child of promise? 
you're a child of Abraham by faith, right? So if you're a child of Abraham by faith, then where are you supposed to be living with Abraham? In the promised land. So where is the promised land if you're only a child of Abraham by faith? Do you see the point? So this verse speaks to believers as being the children of promise and in, uh, inheritors of the spiritual fulfillment that was promised to Abraham. And this indicates that God's promises, including the promised land, are all spiritual in nature. And they are realized through faith and understanding rather than through physical inheritance, right? Now, let's also think about possessing the mind of Christ, right? The Bible tells us about this in 1 Corinthians 2, 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord? that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. What does this mean? In connection with, with what we're talking about, the promised land can be seen as the mind of Christ. It is a state where one's thoughts are aligned with God's will. When one attains this Christ consciousness, they enter into their spiritual promised land a place of inner peace and wisdom and divine purpose that's why you hear the fruit of the holy spirit peace joy love you know all that long suffering self control my friend how can you have that unless you're in the promised land this is a land which you were promised the place where god promised that hey is going to be beautiful when you get to that land you shall rest so in conclusion the promised land from a spiritual and a symbolic perspective represents a higher state of consciousness that one enters through faith transformation and alignment with god's will and it is not a geographical territory but a mental and spiritual realization of god's promises did you get the point i hope that was a blessing 